everyone, welcome back to the Cup of Joe show. I'm Joe, that's Jeremy. We're coming to you on a Saturday. Um, I'm sorry I'm not wearing a tie. I don't know if this is, you know, my sister said, you know, I was, I was somewhere where I needed to, I had a tie on, and then we were going to go to lunch, and then it, she said, why are you still wearing the tie? So I took the tie off, and I, I feel like I look like an idiot. If you feel like I look like an idiot, comment below. If you like the look... Also comment on Facebook, YouTube, you know. I'm sure someone will do that. They won't do that. Okay. Anyway, uh, since we have not seen any movies, um, and it's the beginning of the 2014 movie season, we are going to actually discuss some of the movies coming out. Uh, and the ones that we are most excited about. Um, so did you make did you make the uh, list? Oh, wow, you made a whole top ten list. Yeah. I only what made five. Do? Ugh. I only have five. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with Jeremy because I don't have a ten through six. All right, so you, you take it away, and then I'll just like kind of jump in and, sure. and comment, I guess. Sure, okay. Uh, my number ten movie was Godzilla. <laughs> yes, I'm, okay. Um, that's not what I'm going to do the whole time. Don't worry. Anyway, it had a cool teaser trailer, um, and... I can already tell it's uh, hoping to wipe the bad taste out of everyone's mouth from the uh, 1998 Matthew Broderick version, which uh, was not very good, and a lot of people felt kind of made Godzilla far too uh, weak and not the unstoppable juggernaut that he's uh, that he's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, I think it could be pretty good. Crazy trailer, um, you know that. Into it, I knew that it was a Godzilla trailer, so it was kind of boring for me. But if I didn't know, and uh, that's the, really the point, they're dropping in, and you know, they finally see him, and that's kind of the like, oh my god, moment. It's Godzilla. Exactly. Um, so it's a very, it's a very good trailer. Um, but if you look it up, you, you're gonna know that it's a Godzilla trailer. So. Sure. But anyway, looks good to me. Number nine, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, which um. Is uh, is the first kind of real test by Marvel to see like how weird and obscure their movies and characters can get, and you know if people are still going to go see them. Um, it has a really good cast though: uh, Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, uh, Zoe Saldana, um, Benicio del Toro, and I think it should do a good job of you know really expanding the whole like Marvel universe. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely see it, although I don't really know much about it. Bradley Cooper plays a talking squirrel. Or <laughs> raccoon. Raccoon, rather. Um, that is all you need That's to know. That's all you need to and know. Vin Diesel is a talking tree. Or maybe somebody else plays the talking tree, but there is a talking tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then in my number eight spot, I have The Hobbit, There and Back Again, which may not have even made my list if uh, Desolation of Smaug wasn't noticeably better than uh than an unexpected journey but um i'm looking forward to it it should be a solid flick to uh to wrap up the whole the whole trilogy i'll save it because it may appear on my top five mm -hmm. <laughs> okay number seven for me was dawn of the planet of the apes this comes after the surprising success of rise of the planet of the apes which is a wordy title and should have just gone with the original title of rise of the apes but that was apparently too. You need to have the familiar brand name in there. But anyway, um, the first one was was you know surprisingly good. It it had it certainly had its flaws, but ultimately you know the story of of Caesar was a uh, was a compelling one. And the second one looks pretty good. Looks a bit grittier, but it has Gary Oldman, and he's you know pretty good in everything that he's in. So I think uh, I mean the weird thing is is that like the apes are like heroes and the humans are kind of like the bad guys so in some ways it's kind of hard to sympathize with but um i'm sorry i touched yeah, on there right. but anyway those are my thoughts i think that um the rise of the planet of the apes was actually a, it was a very good movie uh, i was surprised actually uh, that it was uh, so good i i have trouble watching it because it's it's kind of sad in a sense um so it kind of I don't say I don't want to say it's a depressing movie, but like it, it just kind of. I wasn't really happy when I left the theater or anything, so I have trouble watching it. But that doesn't mean it wasn't a good movie. So, I'm I'm excited for the second one as well. 
Number six, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, the thing that worries me about this movie is that it might fall prey to the same things that beset uh, Spider-Man 3, which is just trying to cram in too many villains. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 has um, Electro, Rhino, Green Goblin, and three villains just tends not to work out that well. So that worries me, but the trailer is cool, Electro looks cool, looks, you know, Spider-Man's doing his web-slinging thing, which always looks cool. Um, I still really like Andrew Garfield in that role, and um, I worry about Gwen. Yeah, me too. I, I think it's possible that she goes, but... Um... Spoiler alert! <laughs> she died in the comics like 35 years ago. <laughs> so she might go down. But, uh, yeah, the thing is, what's interesting, though, about that Spider-Man movie is they might be going for the, oh, gosh, I don't know what it's called, the Six. Oh, the Sinister Six. Sinister Six, yes. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. That is a good call. So that might be interesting. I have no idea. Like you said, there they, there's three of them in there, so I don't, I don't know if that's what they're going for, but that's really interesting. Um, so it, that's very exciting. I, I, I like this Spider-Man better than the other where the other Spider-Man's going, even though I really liked the the original Spider-Man, which only came out like ten years ago or so. Um, so, but yeah, th this looks this looks very good. I, I'm, I'm in agreement. Okay, number five, uh, Interstellar, which basically is number five based purely on the Christopher Nolan name because I have that much faith in him. He just makes incredible movies. Obviously, the whole Batman trilogy, also. Um, the Prestige and uh, Inception, so. Well, th that's the thing. Think of the Inception trailer. Mm -hmm. It kind of it kind of reminds you of that Interstellar. You know, it. I, I want to say they're kind of linked in the mm -hmm. that like when the Inception trailer came out, it was just you know they just showed you random things happening, like things flipping over, oranges exploding, uh, <laughs> like, and it was just like, wow, what is this? But for some reason, you were intrigued, and mm -hmm. rightfully so, because it turned out to be a fantastic film. So uh, hopefully this is the same. Yeah, and uh, Matthew McConaughey can do no wrong now. So Yeah, he's in a Christopher Nolan, which is, which is big to kind of enter his crew of people. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So um, after this, Matthew McConaughey will probably be in about three more Christopher <laughs> Nolan movies. But... Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to do your five now? Do you, uh, is, is that what we should, should we do? Yeah, we five, can, we can five, alternate. four, four. All right, we'll do that. Uh, my number five is Transformers Age of Extinction. I, you know, I really like the first three movies. I'm not saying that they're good. I'm saying that they're extremely entertaining, and they're, they're going to give you a very entertaining product every time these films come out, and I think that's something to get excited for. It's uh, very exciting to go to the movies and see a Transformers movie. I mean, they always do very well, obviously, and I think rightfully so. Even though they could be controversial, racist, you know, Michael, you know, whatever they say about Michael Bay, a lot of people go see them, so I can't, I can't fault him in any way, and I enjoy them very much, even though I know that they're all awful movies. This has Mark Wahlberg, which I'm very excited about, so could have a different feel of this one instead of following around a little kid. Um, well, Shia LaBeouf's really not a little kid. He's, he's a grown. But uh, maybe not, you know. It, it, it could even be better, honestly, to follow around a Mark Wahlberg character than... Could be wrong, but um, I, I'm very intrigued by it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, that's a little farther <laughs> down my list, so I'll save my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my number four is Captain America the Winter Soldier, which, you know, basically can be summed up in that part in the trailer where he throws the shield at mm -hmm. uh, at the Winter Soldier and he just catches it, which is awesome. But other than that, um I think it I think it's going to be better than Thor the Dark World. It just you know, it looks solid all around, Captain America, you know, really going into how he adjusts to um the new time in which he's found himself. You know, he's he's an old-fashioned guy from the 40s, and now he's really got to, you know, come into this world. And, you know, it's got Scarlett Johansson in it, Nick Fury, everyone. So, uh, looks solid. Yeah, it's definitely something to be excited about. But uh, it just might appear later on my list, Ooh. so I'll save my thoughts. 
Uh, number four is uh, there and back again, which Jeremy already discussed. Um, I am excited for it. Um, you know, the second one was very good, so I am. I've never read The Hobbit, so I have no idea how it's going to end. Uh, I, I'm very interested. Um, I'm happy with what I've been given so far with the first two films, preferably the second one. Uh, so I, I really like the people involved, and I'm excited. That's really. That's, that's, and that's really all I could say about it. Okay. So my number three is Transformers oh. Age of Extinction. <laughs> uh, basically in total agreement with Joe, everything he said. They're terrible movies, but they're fantastic. Um, and this could honestly be, you know, a better movie than all yeah. the others. Uh, you know, it's got Mark Wahlberg, who is a better leading man than Shia LaBeouf. Mm -hmm. Even though Shia LaBeouf, you know, served his purpose well enough. Um... I don't really know who the hot girl is going to be this time because it, it's a Transformers movie and it, it needs that. Mm -hmm. um, I think Mark Wahlberg has like a daughter or something. She might be the, the hot character in this one, so, which is to say his character has a hot daughter. I don't know about him in real life. Right, right. But anyway, uh, yeah, it should be good. Hopefully Michael Bay tones down the, the potty humor and stuff like that a little bit and basically just gives us robots fighting each other right. and mark Wahlberg doing a couple cool things exactly exactly and um i had a funny comment but i lost it well a, a comment that i thought was funny but anyway we'll, we'll what are we on three three right yeah yeah the winter soldier captain america um i've i really liked although i was skeptical skeptical to begin with uh choosing Chris Evans to play this role because it, it didn't seem like a role for him. Although he's... But the thing was that, you know, I, I wouldn't have guessed is that Chris Evans has really never gotten a role like that. So Chris Evans is a good actor. Yeah, he, he's very good as Captain America, a very different character from uh, Johnny... Storm. Storm, thank I was going to call him Johnny Blaze, but that's Ghost Rider. Um... <laughs> So, I mean, it's a very different character, and that's usually the character he plays, but he does a very nice job as Captain America. Uh, so I am very excited, and you said it in the trailer, The Winter Soldier, which I, I, I think I know who it is, but I, I, I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. I'm not going to say uh, yeah, it. Yeah, I, th I think Do you know who it is? Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. all right. So we're not going to spoil it, but um, it is just, it's very, he just turns around and he catches the shield. And I like that, that's just incredible. Please look it up on YouTube because it's just, it makes the trailer. So it's very exciting. I'm excited to get Captain America away from his origin story and see what, you know, he could bring to the table is just being Captain America. It'll probably be a more, uh, not totally upbeat, but more upbeat Marvel sense of the movie instead mm -hmm. of kind of like I thought that the first one was kind of gritty and a little a little sad in the sense that like yeah, his was, story yeah. is kind of a little sad it is um, but still very good movie and uh, I'm very excited for the second one okay my number two The Hunger Games Mockingjay part one <laughs> oh I forgot it was part one yeah yeah gotta, gotta <laughs> do that anymore gotta rake in the cash anyway uh, I thought Mockingjay was the worst of all the books, which is not to say it was bad. It was still good. I still liked all of them, but I, I thought it was the weakest of the books. But nonetheless, I really like all the movies. Catching Fire was really good, and uh, I look forward to this. I do wonder, you know, what that split point is going to be, so where exactly yeah. they're going to end this one. But it'll be cool to you know, be able to give more attention to things. You know, it's not like Twilight where... I I still don't know how they made Breaking mm -hmm. Dawn two movies. Like, the, the first Breaking Dawn, like, nothing happens. There was a half-hour wedding scene. Yeah, I In know. slow motion. I know. That's but... how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> they got it done. That was it. Anyway, sorry. No, it's um, fine. It's fine. I'm, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm done. Okay, all right. Sorry. I, no, it's fine. But, uh, yeah, all right. I originally had it number one, but I'm going to move it to number two because I forgot it was two movies for some reason. Even though I know that in the back of my head, I'm going to put it down to number two. I'm, I'm excited for the movie because they've done so well. I mean, I know how it ends and everything, but they've just done so well with the first two movies that I'm excited to see what they're going to come out with. So, I mean, everyone that's in it is just, it's, it's fantastic. 
I mean, they've added Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, like they, they've just really hit on on the characters and their likeness in the books, and so that that's really enjoyable to watch. I think I already said Jennifer Lawrence, but it's she's worth mentioning again. I'll jump on her bandwagon, even though I was upset that she won the Oscar last year. Uh, but that that's that's a thing of the past, and she's gonna win it again this year, and she absolutely deserves it. Um, so I'm I'm on the bandwagon. She's just a fantastic actress. I I can't even. It's nothing to doubt anymore. So I'm just interested to see anything that she's even in, and it just so happens that this is a fantastic series. Absolutely. So number one, <laughs> what is it? Okay. I'll just go ahead and reveal it because I don't really want to build much suspense. <laughs> Nor do we have a drum, so we can't do like a drum roll or anything like that. There we go. There we go. The number one picture. X-Men. Days of Future Past. <laughs> oh, I was supposed to like cut, wasn't I? And then you were supposed to... I'm well, sorry. You, you can't read my mind. That's or true. can you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're going to edit that. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> If only we uh, were tech savvy enough to do that. <laughs> and knew how. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so. that said, uh, speaking of mind readers, um, you know, Charles Xavier, once again, front and center in this movie that had a just absolutely stellar trailer. Mm -hmm. And it looks really, really cool. It's uh, based on one of the most popular uh, stories from the comic books. Uh, obviously tweaking it here and there. Originally, it was... Um, Kitty Pride slash, you know, Shadow Cat, that was the one who went back in time. But in the movies, it's Wolverine because he's Wolverine and he's Hugh Jackman and he's really popular. Uh, but you know, even disregarding that, it looks really cool. You know, it brings the casts from both movies together, which are fantastic casts in both of them. Um, it looks, you know, pretty dark and gritty. Really, you know. Uh, James McAvoy's uh, Xavier is, you know, long-haired, beard, he's all depressed and everything, and there's this horrible war in the future, and, like, all the mutants are getting hunted down, and it has, um, what, what's his name in Game of Thrones? The... Oh, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, that's it, mm -hmm. that guy. He's, yep. uh, he's really good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I just, I think it looks fantastic. You mentioned Peter Dinklage, and, and he is fantastic, um, so I'm excited to see that. Uh, it, mine is also number one. That's uh, Day of uh, Jesus. Days of Future Past. I will go. never get that title right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, looking at that trailer, it's kind of difficult to not say that's not the most exciting because it's it's just, I mean, it's person after person after person, and it's just it brings everybody back and all the new people, and it's just... It just, intrigue is just the word that comes out of that trailer. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's very exciting, it's very good acting. I mean, when you bring Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart back, I mean, they're fantastic. Wolverine, uh, Hugh Jackman is fantastic as Wolverine. There's just... Not exactly thrilled to see Halle Berry back. Yeah, but, but she kind of has to be there. Yeah, yeah. You know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? <laughs> The same thing that happens to everything else. Which, that is much more emotion than she had yes. in the movie. <laughs> it's true. So there you have it. There's his top ten, my top five most exciting uh, movies, um, most intriguing, I guess, of 2014. I hope you enjoyed that because we only have a minute left. Um, okay, really quick on the on the box office. I thought it was really interesting that Ride Along made okay. as much as it did. It did, yeah. Uh, Kevin Hart is huge right now, and he is clearly... Uh, crossover into very mainstream appeal. I don't think that, you know, purely African Americans can drive a movie quite that high. I mean, Tyler Perry movies can, at their peak, got into like the 30s, and even The Best Man Holiday cracked 30, but getting over 40, that's that's huge, yeah. and they, it shows that he has a lot of crossover appeal. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot of range. I mean, how many people do we know that, like, love Kevin Hart? Yeah, I mean, just that, pretty much everyone yeah, you run into. Hilarious. Um, so it's I was shocked by that. Uh, Frozen still going going strong. Is, yeah. You know what's crazy though is real quick. Despicable Me Two made a lot of money. Yeah, it really did. I can't believe that Frozen hasn't caught it yet, for it, with its legs. And like it's gonna be close. I think it's crazy. But um, anyway, we're out of time. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week.